Okay. Show me. Hi there guys, welcome to the Dutch Sea channel. Thank you very much for tuning in for a tooltip this time. And the tooltip is about the content of this box. Now, ordinarily my tooltips are kind of like, um, well, here's a nice uh, product. Uh, you might want to check it out. I found it useful and blah, blah, blah. And that's, uh, that's it. This time, however, I should tell you that if you don't already have one of these TS100s, uh, you should uh, buy one. Uh, period. Uh, uh, thank me later. <laughs> yeah, it's as simple as that. Okay, so this is a soldering iron, or the, the content of this box is a soldering iron. It obviously doesn't have an, uh, a battery, it's not a wireless soldering iron. That would be really, really nice. <laughs> but uh, no, not, no such luck. Now, there is a good chance you already have one of these. Because they are pretty popular and they are popular for a reason. They are super duper handy. Yeah, if you do any kind of soldering in the field, uh, these are mandatory, basically. But I should tell you that I do have a professional soldering station. But I find myself kind of only using this one because it's so convenient. You can solder anywhere, you don't have to take your uh, uh, electronics to your soldering station, you can take your soldering iron to wherever you want to work. So, okay, so how does it work? It has a display, as you can see, two buttons and a tip. Yeah, um, nothing spectacular there. You can replace the tip, but as you can see, this does look quite different from other soldering irons. In a conventional soldering iron, you typically just replace the tip if you want a different shape of tip or maybe your tip has worn out. Yeah, this looks different, right? And the reason for that is that the, the heating element is contained in the tip. So every tip you buy has its own heating element. Now that has a drawback and that has a benefit. Uh, the drawback is that these uh, tips are more expensive than on regular soldering irons. And the benefit is that if you'd uh, somehow damage or break or whatever uh, your heating element, in a conventional soldering iron you'd um, throw the soldering iron away, kinda. In the case of this TS100, uh, you just replace the tip. And yes, again, it is a little more expensive than a regular tip. But, um, well, in a regular soldering iron you can't, well you can't, maybe you can replace uh, the heating element, but in most cases that's just as expensive as the entire handle part of your soldering iron. Okay, so how does it work? Well, um, you insert the tip, you can screw it down, but I... I never do. <laughs> okay, and you can power it at the rear, it's a bit hard to see, but it has two connectors, a barrel jack and a USB connector. Now that USB connector you can use to change settings and upgrade firmware in your soldering iron. Um, basically I don't think many people would. Uh, you can change the heating curve and such, but would you? A soldering iron is something you buy to use, right? <laughs> yeah, I do. So maybe in specific cases it can be handy to change the, the curve, but well, I haven't found a need to. Okay, so apart from the soldering iron itself, you need a wire like this. It doesn't come with it. Uh, regrettably. I'll have a link to this wire and it ends in an uh, XC60, very convenient, especially if you want to solder in the field. And um, this is a very nice wire as you can hopefully see, it's super duper supple. I've never come across a wire that this, that's this supple. Very nice and uh, very handy. Uh, if you ever do any kind of soldering you know that if you've got a stiff wire, as I have on this soldering iron, it gets in the way and it makes the soldering job uh, awkward. So again, 
it's very nice that this wire is super duper supple. Very nice. Um, yeah, you regret regrettably you do have to uh, order it uh, separately. Uh, then again, maybe if you aren't going to be powering it from an XC60, you don't pay for a wire you don't use. So, well, maybe it's not a bad thing. Uh, you can uh, obviously also power this thing from a regular 12 to 24 volt power brick. Okay, so one end plugs into the soldering iron and in my case the other end plugs into a LiPo. Now I kind of always use a 3S LiPo. Oops, not in view. This is a 3S LiPo. Uh, you can use up to a 6S but not fully charged, 24 volts, so a 6S when, uh, when uh, all the cells are charged to f uh, 4 volts, right? Ok, now, the display has come to life as you can hopefully see. It says to press this here button and then it will uh, heat up the element. Now it will remember your last selected temperature, in my case that's 340 degrees Celsius. You can set it to Fahrenheit, by the way. Okay. Um, if you use a uh, higher voltage LiPo, I again I use a 3S, but if you use a 4, 5, or 6S, the heating time will shorten. So, um, okay, so it's now at uh, 340 degrees Celsius. Great, now I can solder a Presto. Now if I want to raise or lower that temperature I can click and hold and uh, in increments of 10 degrees you can raise or lower this temperature. Very convenient. Again, uh, it will remember your last used temperature. Um, if it senses that it's not used for a couple of minutes, it'll uh, throttle on down. So that's that's a useful feature, I think. Okay, so as said before, this soldering iron comes with one tip. Um, mine is well used, as you can probably tell. A pointy tip. And yes, there are uh, other tips, but again, the soldering iron only comes with one tip. However, there is a package in which the soldering iron comes in a, an aluminium case with all the tips that are available. However, I, would, I, I kind of wouldn't uh, advise to get that one. Will you be using that case? Hmm, questionable. And you'd be paying for tips that you won't use, because uh, some tips might not uh, be useful to you. Now um, it'll be a bit hard to see. As you can see this is a broader tip with a 45 degree angle over here. Here is a chisel uh, which I just got in. I haven't used this one. Uh, might be useful to uh, cut foam by the way this one. And I've got a uh, smaller, this is uh, more or less like uh, this one but a uh, smaller tip. And uh, what do I have here? Yeah, a uh, square uh, chisel. Okay, I can't really tell you which tips to get. I just start with the uh, default tip and see how you like that and what your requirements are. Um, if you ever want to solder up, for instance, XT60s or uh, bigger wires to a PDB, for instance, uh, you might want to check out uh, this tip and I'll have uh, a link to this tip. This one is probably the most useful one. Uh, a 45 degree uh, broad tip. So with these two tips you'd have a pretty good starting point I think. So again soldering iron plus uh, one extra tip should get you very well started. And well depends on how you want to power this iron, but uh, I think this wire for an XC60 is very useful. Now there's one other thing you really need, and that's a thing like this. I'm not sure what this is called, iron shavings or so, and it's used to clean your tip. Now uh, some irons uh, come with a sponge, which you have to uh, make uh, wet, um, but 
in my mind that doesn't really work and it doesn't uh, work as well as a, uh, a thing like this at all. I'm not sure um, if Banggood sells these, I've got the soldering iron from Banggood, um, I'll have a look. But again, you really should invest in a cleaner like this. If you don't keep your tips clean, if you're not uh, familiar with soldering uh, yet, uh, the performance of your iron will uh, diminish <laughs> and maybe it'll even overheat if it's uh, very gunky. I'm not sure, I've never <laughs> tried, <laughs> tried that, I always use a cleaner like this, but again, mandatory if you are doing any kind of soldering. Alright, that's it, uh, yeah, quick little uh, product tip. And ordinarily I'd ask you uh, if you already have one and uh, what your thoughts on it are, but well, in this case, if you already have one, I know what, you, what your thoughts on it uh, are. You probably uh, very much like it just as I do. For now, I want to thank you for watching. Catch you on the next video. Bye.